Sawiki, so dies. That is an avec thou. <laughs> an avec thou. Let us take a moment in memory of the late Dax Raymond, dearly departed. His car vanished in the depths of the Mojave. Remembered by few, mourned by fewer. All that remains is his office with bills piling up and a fake blackbird on the drawer. Folks, this and is... And a broken window. And a broken window. <laughs> Folks, this has been Cthulhu Confidential with my friend... Quote, unquote, magician <laughs> running this episodes are thoughts and debris on what it was like to play and run so let's start with discussing the scenario i guess before we move on to the system what do you want to do with i that actually life? want to so you folks can probably tell that this is not the first time playing a role-playing game or playing an investigative game or playing a Chthonic game. Mm. Twice, though, I've been creeped out. Like, physically creeped out in this game. And, and I really want to lean on that because I'm not sure it was apparent with my, 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 my tone, but that, that scene with... Um, Helen. With Clara? With Helen and Clara. Physically creeped me out. I was, I was genuinely scared and genuinely scartled and genuinely alienated in that scene. And again, with that bloody blackbird. <laughs> It, this system got me. And I think it's because one of the fundamentals of horror is alienation. So there's unnatural, there's alienation. I'm, I'm, I'm riffing on unknown armies here, but there's unnatural, there's alienation, there's violence, there's zooming out. Um, there, there's a bunch of different stresses. And sitting here in my somewhat dim apartment because the lights are because it's just lit by sunlight and the screens playing this game without any other pcs here bloody hell hmm there's no one to have my back there's no one to tell me that i've i've got the wrong idea my success and failure is entirely up to me and more to the point the environment is entirely up to me. And it, it meant that this the, the, the alienation and the horror, even though I know Chthonic lore, like uh, Nodens and Yig are relatively familiar to me, it's not surprising, but it got me. Yeah. And that was just... Uh, sorry. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, because uh, both of those elements were out of the left field in a way. Uh, so much of the scenario is just you talking to, well, awful, but entirely mundane people uh, that when something supernatural really does happen, uh, you, well, uh, I guess uh, you feel the rug just pulled from under your feet. And it's so strange because a magician and I play uh, all sorts of Arkham games. <laughs> and the Arkham games tend to go for the more gory, unnatural horror mm. elements. And that's just, okay, whatever. It, I'm, I'm completely desensitized to, to that. Yes, yeah, so, so the actual scary part at the end of this scenario, the ghouls, I don't think they were particularly scary to you. Uh, as a player. Oh, as well, a player, they, no. But yeah, I, as a character, sure, absolutely. And living, we can describe how they're yeah, horrible. But because things. I was living in Bex's head, mm. the profound unnatural rather than the gore and the profound alienation is what got me. Right. And my luck. Well, okay, yes, your luck deserves a special mention because 
you go through the entire bloody scenario just chatting up these horrible dangerous people and it's fine you you use exhaust your resources you don't get actually any extra pushes or many edges but you know you're, you're doing fine yeah uh and then you come to the only person who will actively attack you well again there were a couple of just yeah. random people trying to stab you but they weren't credible threats yeah, yeah. You come to the one credible threat in the scenario, and down you go. One and a two. Yep. <laughs> one and a two. And a one. So, so yes, it, the game does its job remarkably well as it a... It really does. Yes, horror investigation game. I, I, it, is, it is a horror game. Um, the scenario was excellently written. Um, I never felt completely lost. There, there were times when the the clues were dwindling, and there was there was only one thread, but it worked. Like the, the I wasn't floundering ever. Uh, and I, you know, I'm really glad that there weren't any. You have to make this roll to get a clue. Oh yeah, no, Gumshoe um, doesn't do that. But like, I'm really glad that that. When violence was on the line, that's what did me in. Because in a murder mystery in an RPG, almost always what happens is you failed to make your bluff roll. No, that, that's it. You, you failed to make your bluff roll. Yeah. Um, so I haven't played that many gumshoe games before, but I really enjoyed the way that uh, in here you don't even need to track or worry about your investigative abilities at all. Oh my, yes. This stuff you know, you, this stuff you can do, you do. The, the, the idea of presumption of competence is depressingly novel in games. It shouldn't be novel. You shouldn't be assumed to be professional at what you are unless it's explicitly part of your character concept. But so many games go 60% chance to go down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, all the percentile games. Uh, I remember when we were playing Dark Heresy oh. and our dri designated driver for the first time in the game got into a transport vehicle or yep. whatever description and like 30% chance of doing anything. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, some some that's like you don't you don't have you don't force checks on easy rolls, but still Gumshoe doesn't force checks on hard rolls either. There is a presumption of competence. And that's really nice. I wish my dice felt the same way, but I've been gaming for... Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Twenty-one years now. Ouch. Yeah, I'll say seventeen for me, roughly. And no, uh, I, I, as I'm sure you folks heard, I wasn't surprised by my role. No, Dex's investigation came to an abrupt and abrupt and messy end. But very, very appropriate. Mm. Um, and 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 so, like in terms of of a player skill, this is like, or in terms of intentionality. This is one place where it's probably worth noting the fact that I didn't try to weasel out of the hard blow. I made that roll, and that was it. Like, I didn't... The story wouldn't have nearly been as sweet mm. if I, the player, was trying to weasel out of the consequences of that last roll. Or even the, the first horrible roll. Mm. Like, I said yes. Hmm. And and the story, if it didn't threaten this, wouldn't have been nearly so sweet, right? This was a horrific story, threatening violence and threatening the unnatural and threatening alienation. Happily not threatening social. That's good. Um, and it was it had affected me seriously because I I allowed those stakes to be on the table. Yeah, in any horror game, you need buy-in from players, or player in this case. Yeah, you can't be scared if you're not willing to be scared. Yeah, 
And it was, I mean, the game made it easy for me to be willing to be scared, mm. which is so nice. Like, I didn't feel like I was fighting the mechanics. Dice, yes. Mechanics, no. <laughs> um, and that's so rare, where the, the affordances offered to my player worked. Like, it's, here are the handles that you can pull in-game, and they're reliable handles that you can pull in-game. It's up to you to pull them. Did you take good notes? Yes, great. Did you pull the right handles? Yes, great. You get to die in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> Yay. But it was appropriate death. It was. Well, What was under that table? I, I just need to know. What was under the cloth? Oh, uh, under the cloth. Sorry, I, I, I've got oh, yeah. It. Let's talk about the yeah. scenario itself and like any questions you might still have. So under the cloth was just a moonshine aggregate, okay. um, which basically made mundane moonshine. Uh, the whole thing of magic moonshine that erases memory was a bit of a bullshit on Roy's part. Really? Wow. Yeah, that guy. Uh, basically, he figured out that... Oh, spoilers. Uh, well, yeah, it's the last episode. It's, it's a debrief. Yeah, it's Deal still, with it. Still, still. Yeah, he figured out that lowering people in a cage uh, to see the ghouls, well, not kills, it doesn't kill them. Uh, most of them react with catatonia and yeah. Uh, so that's what he did to Helen and to uh, the missing cop who was further out in the caves, still chained up. Not that we had a chance to find him. So Mickey honestly didn't know this was going on. Yeah. None of the people knew no, there were ghouls. Um. Uh, so Mickey honestly thought that, yeah, you know, he saved the girl's life. She was going to ask stupid questions and get herself in trouble. Yep. So she got her magic potion and she'll get up, you know, get better eventually. And I mean, so one thing that was going through my head is, oh, oh my God, they've done some something to this moonshine. How do I fix it? Because mm. um, I, I was like my plan all along is tug on the string and see what unravels um in terms of fixing it i didn't have much it was what what where are the threads okay i'm gonna tug on that thread okay i'm gonna tug on this thread okay i'm gonna tug on this other thread yeah and eventually and the threads do lead you to yeah. the conclusion uh fortunately for dex uh and for los angeles this isn't a vast and sprawling plot with far-reaching uh, implications it's literally one hick in the middle of the desert. With a couple of ghouls. With, yeah, a couple of ghouls. Who had a very nice breakfast. I think he threw down some garlic. Mm. <laughs> no, it, 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 the mechanics supported the story, and the story supported the mechanics. And I don't think there's much more that we can ask. Yes. So one thing that I think kind of went by you in this scenario itself, uh, or maybe you just uh, didn't articulate it, is the reason Helen was doing all of this. Uh, you said that she just got bored of Whitey Alexander. Uh, the entire reason she got with Whitey Alexander in the first place was to settle her father's debts. And when the father started racking up debts again, and Alexander indicated that he's not going to forgive him again, uh, she looked for ways to get rid of Alexander, with the deal being that the father's debts will be forgiven. At that point in the story, Dex wasn't... I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um I had Helen labeled as someone who was sleeping around to achieve her own game, oh, her, her own goals. And that is what she was like, doing, but her goals were to save her family rather than just, you know, get rich or well, entertain herself. Okay, philosophically speaking, that doesn't change much. No. Um, consequentialism is... <clears throat> Sorry, if you're interested in that sort of philosophical talk, what's my son with C's game? Seriously. I go into hour-long discussions of some of my decisions. <clears throat> oh, no. The, the, the game worked. The scenario worked. I was clueless. Well, no, you... Oh, no. I was an, effect, I was an effective interlocutor. Yes. Um, uh, for the record, the whole Blackbird thing was entire just added okay, on of top course. of it. <laughs> but it works. Yeah. Um... 
Um, no, it, it works, and like it shows that magician has been gaming for seventeen years. Like <laughs> it. Yes, when I'm not mumbling, when uh, in at least in the first several episodes, uh, I'm kind of struggling a bit with feeding you the correct kind of information because like this is not a scenario that i wrote so yeah. it's, it's not the scenario i'm intimately familiar with even though i've read it several times oh technical skills technical skill like... yeah. and the first bloody question you ask is about the vehicle that helen was using and it's not in the book <laughs> i think it shows for how long i've been playing yes like it's like ooh. What is the thing that's going to cause my GM the most grief? Poke. <laughs> Ooh, poke. So, that's what yeah. I do. Okay. Uh, a couple of more words on the system itself. Yes, uh, so the challenges are interesting. Uh, there is actually, uh, so for each of the challenge that was pre-written for the scenario, uh, there is just, here are the numbers, here's what happens. For everything else, there's a massive table of here's how you set the difficulty. What I think is very interesting is because the game, like, like the scenario writer, whether it's the one from the book or the one I'm writing for you afterwards, we know exactly what the character's capabilities are. Yeah. Uh, you tailor them to that, which means that there are actually two columns in the table for what the difficulty should, should be when you have skill of one die and what should it should be when you have a skill of two dice. So getting a second die worth of a skill is a very interesting thing where it doesn't strictly make you better at it. It makes it... Really? Yeah. Uh, well, what happens is, uh, and I, I will be writing a blog post about this, and by the time this episode goes on, the blog post will be online for a while, and there'll be a link in the des description below. Hint, hint. No, there won't. Yeah, or we'll forget about it. Yeah, uh, there we go. So what I think <laughs> having two dice achieves is, first, it makes it less swingy, because two yeah. dice versus one die, yeah. you know, you're well, as we've seen well, no, Brian do, you roll it. one, two, two, that, like that's no, what, what no, you get. I roll the one, two, one. One, Did two, one. Right. Ah, yes, sorry, I apologize. Um, so there is that. Um, and another thing it does is it actually gives you a chance to earn a push. Yeah. No, and, and I, I, I liked the, um, the push mechanics, although the take a hindrance to get an extra push never made sense to me. Yeah. I mean, looking uh, at how the game turned out, I should have taken every single one of those opportunities. Um, there were only a, a couple that you didn't pursue. But no, I should have. Oh, but yeah, the dice have been pretty shit to you throughout the game. Let's be clear about that. Because you basically did not earn any pushes from ever. Ever. Well, no, I didn't earn any pushes ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, so one thing that I wish I had done was to make a deck of generic uh, edges and generic problems yeah. that the game offers because like, for the very last se uh, episode that would have come in handy. Uh, and, but at the same time, I'm not 100% so, uh, sold on the whole idea because uh, that essentially means pausing the game and going, well, hold on a second, I'm going to look through this deck to see if something applies. Now, I, look, I, that, that's why I suggested just the floating minus ones. Yeah. Uh, By the time we got to that point, we're both sufficiently conversant. It's like, yeah, yeah sure, what else? I mean, in, in general, ha having the actual cards for the notable points in this scenario, yes, awesome. Uh, do but that at a certain point, because well, no, because they can be different. They can have various effects. Sure, but at a certain point, your players are your players, and they'll go off your rails. Such is the nature of playing a role playing game. Yeah, um, which is where a generic well, deck would have been somewhat useful. And I didn't feel like I was on rails. Good. Um, that my my available choices and my available options were always a firm function of what I knew. Um, so I never got the, you can't go there, here's the invisible wall. Yeah. But I also never got the, here's your one lead that I'm going to very patiently feed to you because you're too much of a numpty. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe that car bomb. That car bomb felt like, 
like, hey, Brian's been an idiot here. On the uh, no, that, that is actually part of the scenario. That is just a thing that happens there. Uh, yeah, so it, at times I had to on the fly fudge what the challenge would be about because it would take a slightly different approach, which is perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, another thing that the challenges accomplishes is, yeah, it lets us constrain the outcomes uh, to what we want them to be. So it's not a... Could you unpack that? Yeah. So for instance, if you had annoyed people at the warehouse, you would have gotten a beating out of them. But it wouldn't have been a, you know, we're rolling attacks against one another and hit points are being traded. And it's like, yep, yeah, you got beat up or you ran away. We're not wasting time on that, but also we're not, uh, like you can't beat them all up by rolling critical successes. It repeatedly. doesn't have narrative significance. Yeah, it, but it, it channels you yeah. to what we want to be, what makes sense. Uh, the extreme luck or lack thereof doesn't actually break the outcome. Okay, um, anything else we well, want to say? Okay, so this is the point where if you folks have been following along this far, A, thanks. B, I'm really interested in hearing your reflections um, in the three categories that, that we we just went over. So first off, for but I'm going to add one. First and <laughs> foremost, did you enjoy this? If you did, what parts did you like? If you didn't, a, thanks for sticking along around this long. <laughs> but B, what parts didn't you like? Or obviously some combination thereof. Second, the mechanics. What mechanics did you hear work for you? And of course didn't work. The horror. How did how did listening in like I don't really listen to to games. Neither do I. Just because I get very grumpy at Usually the DM um, or the players. Like if the players aren't taking the game seriously, then why am I bothering? So hopefully I did you folks sufficient respect in taking the game seriously. Um, but the mechanics, what mechanics worked for you as listeners and didn't work? Yeah. And Is there something that we can do differently in presentation if we do do the second scenario? Yeah. And I mean, for that, we will probably swap roles. So I'll be oh, yeah. the investigator. But I, we're, I'm very interested. And so I think we're going to hold off on recording the second scenario until this goes live, just so we can get some feedback. That makes sense. Uh, another specific question I had is the length of the episodes. Yes. How does half an hour work? Um, it feels like it's split fairly cleanly topic wise, but did it work for you folks? Yeah, because we had, what, 10 episodes, and this is 11th for yep. Debrief. Uh, would it work better if they were hour-long episodes and so more would oh. happen each week? Well, it's a question, It's right? a question. Um, and obviously, I'm, we're recording this on a singular microphone, um, dropping another couple hundred bucks for a second microphone doesn't really appeal to me. No. But do let me know if the audio, if any aspect of the audio or presentation was intolerable. But I say unto thee, while it hits the dollars, and I hope to see you next game. Say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>